Okay. Um, I mean, that was a lot of information, but do people have questions on anything regarding clients? Then ICS-24, I didn't really dive into ICS-23 beyond the most hand-wavy thing, but um, that's really kind of getting into the weeds of Merkle proofs, which I don't know, is all that helpful. But, you know, it has it has two, two functions that we mainly need to worry about. There's a verified membership to take a given proof specs, which I said is kind of like the blueprint for the proofs, the root hash, a path and a value, and prove that the value was included at that path with the given consensus root, and then verifying non-membership. So proving that there is nothing in, at this particular path. There's no value at this particular path at this given root. Um, but you know we don't really need to get into the details in my opinion here. Um, cool. One question: when you when you send the packets, uh, so the sending chain uh, will it store in the state of the of the IBC module. Uh, the packets that it wants to send uh, in the key path with the port, channel, and sequence number? Is, is that a bit how it? Yes, it'll, well, it'll store the commitment of the packet, which is just a hash. The commitment of the packet, yeah, the hash, yeah. yeah it'll, it's a hash of that packet data, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or it, it is a hash of the entire packet, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, the the hash of the packet is stored on chain, um, and if that if that's the case, how how does the reader get the full packet? Um, that's where the event system comes in. Um, the full packet is emitted in the events, and relayers can pick that up, and that's how they know the pre-image to the hash, um, and they can submit the pre-image to the counterparty. Um, you mentioned pruning very briefly at the beginning. How often is that run? Or yeah, on what aspects is that run? Yeah, it's uh, a good question. Um, so as I said before, uh, when we, whenever we update the client, we don't replace the old consensus state we have, right? We just create a new one um, and it's stored at a different height. So, you know, we can have a consensus state of height 50, a consensus state of height 70, a consensus state of height 100 all existing in the store. And so long as they haven't expired, meaning so long as um, given the time now on chain A, you know, the consensus state of height 50 isn't one trusting period before, you know, if the trusting period is two weeks, that means the only valid consensus states are those that are, you know, less than two weeks old. Those, those are the only, we only allow you to prove against consensus states that are less than two weeks old. Um, for packets or acknowledgements, or even for proving the next header um, in an update client, as I mentioned before. So yeah, if we're creating new consensus states, we'll be keep adding stuff to our store. And as time goes on, at least those earlier consensus states are going to get expired and they're completely useless. They're just sitting around doing nothing, um, right? So we've implemented some very basic pruning logic at the moment. Um, right now, we just take advantage of the update client so when a relayer sends an update client, we check the earliest consensus state for this client. And if it's expired, we prune it. Um, but we only do this once per update client. So if there are five expired consensus states sitting in the store and someone submits an update client, we'll only prune their oldest one. Um, the reason for this is because when we want to submit update clients, we want to have like an upper bound on the gas that relayers have to pay. Um, yeah, and yeah, uh, maybe maybe we'll create a separate message that'll prune everything potentially in the future. But um, for now, for now, that's what we have. I mean, the old like or the expired consensus states—they just basically increase the size of the client. Yeah, I mean, they just they just increase the amount of they're like useless storage that chain A has in its state machine. Um, uh, 
there's nothing wrong with having them. It's just inefficient. Mm, is there any documentation in the SDK or something about how this um, this Mercury trees uh, work and the stuff uh, that we were talking about? Um, so the all of the stores, um, so all the individual. If you look at the SDK, and maybe I'll just show you. Um, SIMAP as an example of an application. Um, but this is the same is true of Gaia. Um, uh, if you look at SIMAP, we have all these keys, um, each of which correspond to a particular store. Um, and When we mount the KV stores, I believe this will create an IVL store. Yeah. So, um, so long as we're not, you know, running in some testing environment, we'll mount the store with uh, type IVL. Um, so each individual store has type IVL. If you look at the store package here, there's the IVL. Um, I believe tree is where you'll. Or maybe uh, yeah. So when you query on the store, if there's if, if um you request a proof, then they'll be able to get the proof from the tree. I'm just trying to see if there's documentation in the SDK or if it's in. IAVL probably. So um, I imagine if you want to look at the documentation for the subtrees for each module, probably the best place to look at it would be Cosmo slash IAVL. Yeah. So this is this is where mm -hmm. um, documentation would be. Um, okay. yeah. So yeah, there's docs proof. And yeah, this is the the documentation for how the IVL proof looks. Um, and then the overall um, tree is a it's part of the commit multi store that we have in the IP in the SDK. Um, let me see if that has documentation. So is um is level DB not? like using some sort of LSM tree or something to actually write the data to disk as well on top of this or? Uh, I believe so. Um, it's been, a, uh, I touched the IAVL years ago, um, but I no longer remember exactly how it works. Um, Seems tough. Yeah. So the, the IAVL does have a underlying DB that it sets data to and gets data from. And I probably the that structure is not an IVL tree. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if we have great documentation on how the root multi-store is constructed, unfortunately. Um, maybe you should write up an issue. Yeah, um, I'll look into it later, but I, I don't think we have a documentation. Be on the code comments. It's a really nice diagram. Should put it into the uh, specs. Yes, probably yeah, actually. We'll remove the uh, Excala draw style font and yeah. We can put uh, it, in. it is probably one of the best diagrams of IVC that I have seen. Sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I actually like the uh, Excel draw 
yeah. font and stuff kind of makes it like more approachable or something. Yeah, it's nice. I think it looks good. Right, thanks. Sorry for missing the first 30 minutes. I actually was sitting at my desk the whole time and I just thought the meeting started 30 minutes later. Um, yes, I believe we're over time now, right? Or I think you've got 15 minutes left. Yeah, oh, okay. It's, it ends at 3.30, right. Um, cool. Do people have more questions? I need to go and watch the first 30 minutes again. So, so when when we have uh, other mm, non-Cosmos SDK chains um, that want to communicate with, uh, yeah, with a Cosmos SDK chain using ABC Go, then we will need to have uh, a light client for those other chains, right? That uh, implements this, uh, how we verify the proofs and all the stuff, right? Uh, uh, could you repeat the question? So, so if you have an, a non-Cosmos SDK chain implementing, uh, yeah, uh, the IBC protocol, mm -hmm. uh, and they want to communicate with, uh, I don't know, the Cosmos hub, uh, we will need to create a light client um, in IBC Go for the other chain, right? A new, a new light client for that other chain, like, I don't know, Solana or Substrate or, yeah, it depends. Yeah, if they if they're a non SDK, you can be a non SDK chain and still use Tenement. Um, and if that's the case, then the Cosmos Hub doesn't need to do anything at all. Um, yeah. If it's a new consensus mechanism like Solana or Near or whatever, um, then yes, we would need a separate client implementation that will have to define its own update client and submit this behavior functions and and all that um and so yeah that's kind of why we're looking to get the wasm client in um because if we do that then rather than having to make the hub upgrade every time it wants to add a new client implementation we can just upload a new smart contract that'll that'll do this for us okay Okay, and so so the the Wasm client is is like a is like a light client that will be part of IBC Go. Uh, yeah, the Wasm client is something that we're getting into IBC Go. It'll it's a um, it's not a client implementation itself. It is a kind of it sits between um, ICS two, which is you know the client handler, and individual smart contracts that are implementing, individual WASM smart contracts that are implementing the client interface. Um, and so, yeah, as far as client, uh, as far as ICS2 is concerned, it'll be talking to the WASM client, um, but the WASM client will then just redirect those calls to a smart contract, which might be implementing the Solana client or the, the near client or whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm.